clubs than any of the leading clubs in recent seasons and they've been hit hard by suspensions today three players are banned first choice fullbacks Lauren and Ashley Cole who's also injured of course and worse still their midfield driving force Patrick Vieira the players who replace them are Colo Toure Gio van Bronckhorst and Ray Parler there are also places for Freddie Jungberg his first start for over two months after injury the Brazilian Adu and Franny Jeffers Dennis Bergkamp's injured Sylvain Wiltord and Gilbert are both rested. Well, this really is an excellent opportunity for Arsenal to put some serious daylight between themselves and Manchester United and Newcastle. Well, because of injury and suspension, Arsenal has gone for two midfielders in those full-back positions with Toure and Van Bronckhurst, and I'm sure they will bomb on at every opportunity. Big boost for Arsenal, really, to have Freddie Lundberg back in the side. I mean, missed so many games of late, and certainly on the other uh, flank, you've got Robert Perez, who really has been in outstanding form of late. And of course, up top, you've got Henri and Jeffers. The front two really are capable of giving their best defences problems. And it's actually interesting that Henri has not rested as regularly as some in this squad. And I think that's a measure of uh, his importance to this side. Charlton make just one change from the team that beat Aston Villa to record a club record fifth successive victory in the Premiership. Mark Fish, suspended for that game, returns in place of the Moroccan international Tahar El Kalej, who was recently signed from Southampton. Richard Roof is still injured. It's a sign of the increasing strength of Charlton's squad that their newest international, Paul Konczewski, only makes the subs bench. Ah, what a brilliant job Alan Kerbishley has done to get this Charlton side challenging for a UEFA Cup spot. You know he's done it with a mixture of good organisation, hard work and certainly the increasing emergence of youngsters such as Scotty Parker, Jonathan Fortune and Kevin Lisby. Parker and Ewell in particular have been very prominent in recent months from that central midfield area. It's an area that's going to be very important and it will influence the outcome of today's game. And I think up front, Lisby and Bartlett, not really prolific, but there's certainly a good blend of pace and power and uh, a big desire to work hard for the team. Well, one aspect of Arsenal's success, they perhaps have one. You know, there's competition for places in various areas, and I think the way they play is very attractive, very flowing. And I think Manchester United seven trips here to get that many. Charlton in their change strip of All Black, getting the game underway. Arsenal can now feel Newcastle as well as Manchester United breathing down their necks. They're both just four or five points, I should say, behind them. And Charlton have Chelsea in their sights. They'll go level on points with Claudio Ranieri's team if they can repeat their victory at Highbury last season. Henri finding Jeffers. Go kick the verdict. A good defending from Jonathan Fortune. I think that's going to be a feature really, how Charlton handle the movement of Thierry Henry. We've just seen there from the quick free kick from Edu, and he just pulls away off his marker, finds a little bit of space, and once he gets turned and squares you up, he's got wonderful pace and he takes people on at will. These two teams have an identical record over the last 16 league games. Ten wins, four draws, and two defeats each. As Fish wins it back. Three with a part to play in that Charlton attack. Unwittingly. Much there on Kelly Toure. He's replacing that uh, right back. The suspended Lauren Parler. Beaten to it by Scott Parker. One mark for the Charlton man today. His 100th league game for the club. A big good battle there between Scott Parker and Ray Parler. They're both very competitive. Parker certainly been in outstanding form for Charlton Athletic in recent months. Certainly deserved his uh, call up to the England squad against Australia. Now Freddie Jungberg, a big cheer to greet the news of uh, his inclusion in the starting 11 after so long out with injury. Push back to goalkeeper Kylie. Martin Keown comes to meet it. And the header on by Bartlett finds Jensen. Turned by Lisby. Now Chris Powell. Parker. It's broken kindly for Lisby. You'll look to uh, feed it into Jensen, but got too much on the ball. That's a great shame because uh, while they played some nice stuff on this left hand side, Kishishev had a lot of room over on the right hand side, and the ball really needed bringing out of a tight area. Okay, certainly, it's fair to say the Charlton come here with uh, a lot of confidence. 
and one defeat in 15 Premier League games is a tremendous achievement. However, Arsenal themselves have gone 11 Premiership matches without defeat since they went down 2-0 at Manchester United in early December. Won seven and drawn four in that period. They had a very similar run at this stage last season, which they ended up extending to 21 matches unbeaten. And of course they won the title. Cardi's clearance. Nisby. Shishev pursuing it. Broncos, Jeffers header. The determined challenge by Ewell in midfield, and Charlton get the throw as well. Ewell. He's been looking for a bit of support. And in the end, it all went wrong for Charlton, but not much has of late. They've got that uh, club record fifth successive Premiership victory despite being without four key players against Aston Villa Alan Kirbishly was down to his last 16 fit men and by the way he's just been voted manager of the month for February I hope it doesn't have the usual effect but it's pretty much the kiss of death that award yeah you've mentioned it it probably will be yeah there's Colo Toure the Ivory Coast International Martin Keogh takes over his next Premiership game will be the 550th league game of his career. Ray Parler, Jungberg down the right, up against Chrissy Powell. And he's beaten here. And goes down, and referee Styles waves aside the first penalty claim of the day. Campbell winning it back strongly for Arsenal. And then couldn't find Pires. Lisby. Campbell in control again. There's one thing we talked about it yesterday, didn't we, about uh, Chelsea's performance at Newcastle, about starting well, putting aside that have played midweek in the Champions League under some pressure. You know, Arsenal really weren't at their dominant best against Ajax, so they've had a little bit of travelling. Whether uh, they are feeling a little bit tired, it's important that Charlton set about their task very quickly early on and just test Arsenal a wee bit. This is Toure, who actually made his full debut against Charlton back in September. Keo and on to Campbell. They do. Lovely football by Arsenal. Pires. Used to a high octane start from the champions. And we're getting it. Toure. Looking for Henri. Jeffers is right up alongside him. Good header away by Fish. Jungberg. Just kept it in play. No, the linesman belatedly flanked to Jungberg's dismay. Fish just covering around behind Jonathan Fortune. It's important, I think, when you play it against Henri and Jeffers, that uh, you get the distances right about your defensive play. You know, if you push too far up the field, then there's always a danger of Henri's pacing behind. And if you drop off, then they've got the capability of getting the ball into their feet. So the balance has got to be right. Powell's head up, straight to Parla. Jeffers, Jungberg. Now on to Adu, good ball for Pires, he's got Van Bronckhorst to his left, Henri ahead of him. And often he miscontrols the ball. Great shame, isn't it? Uh, but Robert Pires just picking that ball up on the left-hand side. They have played some terrific one-touch football in that midfield area, Arsenal. And Charlton, as hard as uh, you work, very difficult to get in and around when the side shows that quality. A big little bounce there for David Seaman, the ball didn't carry as quickly as he thought it would. Actually, we saw West Ham, didn't we, on a number of occasions when we were last at Highbury, elect to do that. Remember David James just knocking the ball long. And Arsenal, well, whether it's a centre-half not taking command or David Seaman, perhaps, an earlier call. Charlton have lost just once in their last 15 league games, and that was on that uh, infamous Chelsea beach, which they subsequently complained about, of course. They've won 10 and drawn 4 in that period. They come here today sixth in the league, above the likes of Liverpool and Tottenham, Leeds, Manchester City. They do. Charlton's throw. And they're working very hard on the Charlton. And uh, that's certainly been a key in their good performances of late. A real collectiveness about them. No real big stars in their side. But they are really prepared to work hard for each other. 
as uh, the manager says I may not have a team of stars but I've got a lot of players that other managers in the Premiership would love to have Fortune looking to angle it up to Lisbon it's come to Parker one back by Parler be a good battle between those two today <laughs> and that battle has gone Arsenal's way through kick well, Scotty Parker launched himself into the challenge for Ray Parler. Certainly, uh, Parler has uh, seen it all, done it all. You can see there, Scott Parker. He really did get stuck into the challenge. Okay, the man of the match performance in the victory over Villa in Charlton's last game. Michael's after being picked, of course, for the England squad for the friendly against Australia. Well, he never made it off the bench. You great uh, success of his new role in midfield you Henri Edu here's Parler the Arsenal passes flowing in familiar style Toure on to Jungberg Parker closing him down missed the last 14 games by the Jungberg with an Achilles injury here Fitting around with great pace early on here. That's the ball well on the Arsenal on a very difficult playing surface. Well, you mentioned it earlier, I think. Uh, I can't recall never being this poor for uh, a long, long time here at Highbury. Here's Bartlett for Charlton. Jensen has scored a fabulous goal in their win here last season. He was dumped to the ground. Parker plays it on. Powell keeps it in. Lisby up with him. That's a good ball for Ewell. Good player was there by Charlton on this left hand side. Chrissy Powell did very well linking up the pass from Scott and Parker. Oh, by Lee Young on Pires. Arsenal have already taken the free kick and Bronkhorst replacing Ashley Cole. And I expect that uh, job for a while now. It's going to be some six weeks before Ashley Cole is back in the Arsenal uh, reckoning. Standards. This game has got off to uh, a pacey beginning. Very competitive as well. I think that's a, a big key in this game. Certainly, if uh, Charlton gets something out of the game, they need to make it competitive. Outside there, Tony Jeffers. They do start the game reasonably well, I think, in that midfield area. I was quite surprised you know, when you look at the amount of Brazilians who are giving caps because they played so many games over the course of the season. I don't think he's been capped yet. No, that's right. Taking the place, I suppose, today of another Brazilian who certainly has been capped and played in the World Cup winning team, Gilberto, who's given a break today. He's on the subs bench. Keown beaten to it by Bartlett. Difficult ball for Campbell, who claims there was a handball by the Charlton striker. win today Charlton they'll go level on points with Chelsea although Ranieri's team do have a much better goal difference incredible isn't it really when you think of the job that Alan Kerbishley has done you know a side that uh, with only 10 games to go including this one and they are on the verge dare I say at the verge of a UEFA Cup spot yeah he says their real target is to beat their uh, best premiership total of 52 points which they achieved last season of course, as you say, place in Europe is a real possibility. It's a big test today, of course, and the next game for them in the Premiership after this is Newcastle. So they'll uh, know a lot more about their destiny after those two matches. Parler. Van Bronckhorst. And back by Luke Young, the former Tottenham man, assured of a, an unfriendly reception from the home fans today because of that. Campbell's clearance. Away by Fish. It's gone to Van Bronckhorst. And now Parler given away. Parker. This is Jensen. Dane picking out Kishishev. And Arsenal back in possession with Robert Pires and Ray Parler. He's had uh, limited first team opportunities this season because of injuries and the competition for places here. 
Young there. Good ball for Henri. Oh, very close to feeling it under the path of Jeffers. Now Edu. Pires. Toure on the right. Powell and Bartlett doubling up against him. And it was Chris Powell who won it. This be a chase and chase here with Sol Campbell. <laughs> it does help when you build as powerfully as Sol Campbell. <laughs> I think brick outhouse was the word that you were looking for. That's incredible, isn't it? Power and strength. But you know, when you think we've played uh, nearly 14 minutes, and we haven't really seen an awful lot of Thierry Henry in this game, which is incredible when you think of the form that he's been in this season. 25 goals in total. But uh, that's a measure of how well Charlton have started this game. Very competitive, especially in that midfield area. Henry held that up brilliantly. Here is Arsenal, the top scorers in the Premiership. 62 goals in 28 games. They've scored in 66 of their last 67 league games. The only blank in all that time when they lost 2-0 at Manchester United in December. Lisby, Parler intercepts, and Fish misjudged the bounce, Henri! Pires! Chance hasn't gone yet, Henri again, Jeffers in the middle, Pires almost reached it, how did Charlton survive that? Even they won't know. Oh, incredible, isn't it? He looks to the skies, he can't quite believe it. It was almost a leg break, wasn't it? That took Mark Fish by surprise and he got it onto his left foot. He's actually wheeling away, he thinks he's scored. But when he gets up on his feet, he shows an unbelievable piece of skill. Just to flick this ball up, there you go, flick! <laughs> Absolutely brilliant, wasn't it? Well, that was the chance, and there's the ball that was very deceptive against Mark Fish. But Henri, well, you certainly wouldn't have uh, bet against him not converting that chance. There's Kishishev, meanwhile, for Charlton. Long for Jason Newell. Well read by Martin Keogh. Really good rhythm to this game in the opening quarter of an hour. It was a good pace, I think. I, you know, I, I always, when we do come to Highbury, you're always quite uh, impressed, aren't you, by the start that Arsenal always seem to make in football matches. Opening 15, 20 minutes, they always seem to be very quick about sides. And I think you can clearly see that Charlton have talked about that this week and made sure that they're well organised, well disciplined. And to be fair, up to now, they've done reasonably well. There's only that one chance by Henri. Newell. On to Parker. Lisby. Chef to his right, he looks for Jason Newell in the centre, and it's come to Bartlett. Didn't make the most of that. Ow. It could be tricky for Arsenal as well. But the danger's gone now. Fish. And he wins it back briefly, but now Luke Young. Sean Bartlett. Newell won the battle against Jungberg. Now the Dane Jensen. This is Jason Newell. Offside. Well, that must have been tight. And Kevin Lesby looked as if he'd sneaked in behind Saul Campbell, but just moments earlier we saw a little cameo play of Jason Newell. Capable he is of getting into the box. And he wasn't far away with uh, meeting that cross from that right hand side. And he'll make those runs late. Here's Beidou, who scored when Arsenal beat Charlton 3 0 at the Valley in September. He's lost that challenge. Parker. Newell. Do well to hold on to that, but Jungberg wins it back. Toure couldn't go forward. Keon there in support. from Martin Keown to pick out Thierry Henry Perez edge of the box Jeffers near post 
a bit close to the goalkeeper, wasn't it? But as you rightly said, Martin Keon fired a, a brilliant ball of all 40, 50 yards. Henri certainly made it easy for him. The run was uh, very bright, very astute. The impression also need a little bit more width in their team at the moment. All very narrow, which suits Charlton. Kishishev looking for Lisby. Was that a corner? That's what Charlton are claiming. But the decision is goal kick. Arsenal, as you'd expect, with a fabulous home record in the Premiership. 12 wins out of 14. The only matches they haven't won here against Liverpool, which they draw, or drew, and against Blackburn Rovers, which they lost. They've scored 33 goals at home. It's easily the highest total in the Premiership. 37 out of 42 points at home. Again, Kishishev. Yule's made strides down the middle. He made up a lot of ground there, Jason Yule. That's good defending by Toure. Keon's clearance has gone straight to Powell. Now Jensen. Yule. And he was being held. Charlton get the free kick. He didn't have an influence on this game, Jason Yule. You know, already we've seen three or four good runs from that midfield area to get forward it's clearly that balance uh, suits Charlton very well him making those runs from that area of the field Alan Kirbishley said when he signed him from Wimbledon he almost got two players for the price of one he can play up front and he can uh, certainly play very well from midfield top scorer this season with ten goals and Jonathan Fortune has gone forward for Jensen's free kick it was Keown who met it though Newell Perez did well and get the free kick now by Luke Young it's gone in early to Jeffers Franny Jeffers good block by Powell and now Jensen oh, it's been a very enjoyable start here the opening 20 minutes Thierry Henry Calm play by Chris Powell. You can certainly see why Charlton have done so well this season, can't you? I mean, up to now, I remember this stage last season when we were here, of course, when Charlton won 4-2 for 20 minutes. They got absolutely battered by Arsenal and could have found themselves 3 or 4-0 down. But they've given a very good, competitive, well-organised opening 20 minutes. Kishi for there. Charlton get the free kick for that late challenge on Radostin Kishishev, the Bulgarian international. That's clever, wasn't it? The way he won the free kick as well. I think he's just uh, come the referee away, but there may well have been some form of contact. But, uh, well, we'll have a Klaus Jensen, we'll have a dip from here. As you uh, said at the top of the programme, well, let's go, wonderful goal here last season where he uh, chipped the goalkeeper from the edge of the box Klaus Jensen shaping up to hit this one Powell with him but it is the Dane and it's miles over his best was it <laughs> really disappointed that's got a lot of quality Klaus Jensen it's, uh, it's really interesting to see some uh, comments attributed to Patrick Vieira this week and actually singling out Jensen as one of the, the star players in this Charlton Athletic lineup I don't think it's his best position playing wide left he prefer to play central midfield but because of the form of Ewell and Parker he's having to uh, play in the position that he finds himself at the moment has it back here for the Gunners and the referee has awarded the free kick for Jason Ewell's challenge well, maybe Thierry will read to try his look at the other end down from a free kick certainly uh, fancy this also got the abilities of uh, Van Bronckhurst and, and Edu of course who scored from free kicks this season so they're certainly blessed with one or two around the ball Henry has scored 10 goals in his last nine Premiership matches 
is the division's leading scorer. But he leaves this one to Van Bronckhorst. That's the first time ever I've seen Thierry Henry not take a free kick, <laughs> given the opportunity. Sol Campbell. Good header. Jungberg finding Toure. He's done well, Freddie Jungberg. Interesting ball in as well. Pires with a header back. Jeffers is there. And Pires leaves it to Henri and it's gone back to Pires. Good save. Charlton survive again by the skin of their teeth. Jungberg. That's a free kick. Well, how did he manage to scramble that away? Charlton Athletic in Kylie knows that they're a little bit fortunate there. It was actually the work of both wide players, Freddie Jungberg with a cross from the left hand side and Robert Perez getting in on the act. And Broncos will take this one. Sol Campbell, a possible target, far post. Certainly aimed in his direction. Excellent defending. Arsenal have a corner. Charlton players still not happy with the referee styles about the original free kick. Up goes Campbell again. to relieve some of the pressure Keo that's Thierry Henry with a lovely little downward header for Perez and Fortune certainly needed a bit of help and he got it from Luke Young They do for Arsenal. Luke Young's just dumped Robert Perez to the floor. And here goes Henri Jeffers! Give him the right service and he'll give you the goals. Well, they haven't been at their best, have they, Arsenal? But just over the last two or three minutes, they've looked particularly dangerous. There's enough Charlton bodies in and around the defensive third. You would have thought to deal with this, but wonderful play by Henri. And then the ability to get the ball in the danger area. Mark Fish is appealing for offside. Was certainly very close indeed, but Henri unselfish outside of the right boot. And he's just saying to his striking partner, finish that one off. And he duly obliges this. He said he would become the fox in the box. And Jeffers having limited opportunities in this Arsenal first team. Puts Arsenal ahead. And at the other end, Lisby almost bringing Charlton level straight away. Well, I talked about the pace and the power of the front two of Charlton. You've just seen that in one very special moment. The header from Bartlett and the turn and the strike from Kevin Lisby isn't far away. And David Seaman scrambling to his right hand side. Fortune makes the run to the near post. He's aimed towards Fish. Now Kishishev, he's done well. Campbell pumps it clear. And it could have been an instant uh, answer, if you like, by Charlton Athletic to go and go goal down. Bartlett on to Lisby. Back here, he's gone straight to Toure. And then Broncos. And Broncos gets it away. Thierry Henry. Powell's clearance. No let up in the pace here. Tony Jeffers scoring only his second Premiership goal of the season. The other one came at West Bromwich Albion on Boxing Day, his fifth goal in all competitions. And remember, most of his appearances have been as a substitute. He even scored on his England debut, of course, against the Aussies. Here he is, 
Oh, the little ball. And Jeffers again. Oh, great return for Jungberg. Charlton under the cost at the moment. Yeah, he's getting into the groove, aren't they, Arsenal? Having got that goal, you can see there's a lot of confidence being drawn from that. Just about got a fingertip to that. Important that he did. It was just enough, wasn't it, Dean Kiley? Certainly scampering away towards his far post. This is uh, certainly a good test of Charlton's resolve at the moment. They need to hang on because Arsenal certainly finding some form. So in many respects, is uh, sort of draw parallels from yesterday's game. The visiting side working very hard, and doing reasonably well. The home side not playing as well as uh, we've seen them of, uh, during the course of the season but certainly getting the opening goal see that uh, Charlton have uh, had just as much of it as Arsenal and here's the man whose goal separates the sides Jeffers doing well and Jungberg in the back of the possession with Jensen it's come back to Franny Jeffers again <laughs> he was just about to line up a shot and Jason Ewell said there you go Parker to Powell This is Jens. Scotty Parker again. Kishishev coming in from the right. Jensen. Bartlett. Arsenal back in possession with Freddy Jungberg. Ture. Oh, good ball. Parla. Up against Fortune. You're doubling up behind him. They do. Parker in the tackle again. Here's Jungberg. Great spot to see uh, Van Bronckhorst run. It was also noticed by Kevin Lisby. Oh, he's just beginning to have an impact on this football match, Freddie Jungberg. It was always going to be difficult for him. He's missed the last 14 games. He needed to settle into this game. And he's just beginning to find his rhythm and his form and his touch. And I think uh, the way that he's... Uh, Seems to be finding positions in field now. He's giving Charlton a problem. Jensen needs some width here. Charlton, Chris Powell will provide it. Jensen. In goes Jungberg to win it back. Henri. Perez is right up with him. Parker's tackle was a good one. And he didn't like that, Thierry Henri. I didn't like it at all. I must say, I didn't see anything wrong with the tackle myself, but uh, maybe the replay will shed a different light on that incident. Well, this is uh, Scotty Parker's game. You know he's competitive. You can't take that away from him. But I think the way Thierry Henry reacted right under the nose of Robert Stiles, they have to be very, very careful indeed. You know, we've seen time and time again when players have reacted in such a manner, then uh, they have uh, occasionally been given red cards. I think on this occasion Thierry's only going to get a yellow but you can see Scotty Parker there trying to work hard he actually gets something of the ball there and then Henri just kicks out at the Charlton midfield player as I say Rob Styles gets a very good view of that course for him still finger wagging but I've got to say I saw absolutely nothing wrong with Parker's tackle at all I no, agree with you he's a wonderful player Thierry Henri it doesn't give him the right not to be challenged and now he's uh, fueled with anger and giving away a free kick. Well, he has every right to go for that challenge, so he really shouldn't have a go at Scotty Parker for the challenge that he makes. And uh, he clearly catches uh, Scotty Parker, but he wins the header. There's nothing wrong with that. I actually think he's uh, perhaps been hard done by Thierry Henry on that occasion. I do think that it was a header that he had every right to go for, and he clearly wins. But clearly the referee felt that he was leading with his knee, which certainly catches Scott Parker. Well, I've never seen a referee change his mind, so Henri <laughs> would do well to back away and just get on with the game here. <laughs> Jensen's free kick, Bartlett sneaking around the back of the Lisby. And Ewell 
completing the threat. Now Perez, in goes Kishishev hard. See another uh, example there of Jason Yule getting in the danger area. I don't know if you want to get on the angry really, because <laughs> it's dangerous enough with his car. Here's Toure. On to Parla. The invisible man was the uh, target for that cross, I think. This <laughs> is getting very frustrated, isn't it, at the moment, Thierry? He's just going to settle himself down. Otherwise, he'll uh, certainly become another uh, statistic of Rob Styles. Another free kick in Arsenal's favour for the foul on Pires this time. Boiling up nicely by Highbury. Sol Campbell, the threat on the near post, Martin Keown, far post. Great header away by Chris Powell, it's gone to Van Bronckhorst, oh, good header back. He's on re again. Thank you very much. <laughs> Keown getting in with Trish at the far post and uh, three Charlton players in the road outside, I think. Well, I think uh, well, George was talking about Thierry in the studio beforehand. It's arguably saying perhaps the quickest player in the world, but you know, he can play as a left wing, he can play as a right wing, he can play as a centre forward. He's got the ability to drop off and at times play as a midfield player, and that's what makes him so special. Was by Henri. Powell got something on it as well. Now Pires back to Sol Campbell. Brilliant skill from Campbell. How well did Kevin Lisby do though? Very nimble touch from the big man there, Youngberg. David Seaman under pressure from Bartlett. Henri. On it goes to Paul. Powell wins it back for Charlton. Now Parker. Henri stayed on the ground. And we've got a blow in the face there. Lisby for Charlton. Powell's tackle is a bad one, according to Mr. Styles. Free kick. Well, I'm not convinced the leader about that free kick. I don't think uh, Kevin Lisby really had that ball under control as Ray Paul just stepped across to win the ball back. Yeah, it's uh, given Charlton an opportunity to get the likes of uh, Fish into a more advanced area. And the ball that we've seen already can be very commanding in the air. And Jason Yule will be looking to pick bits and pieces up. Jensen's effort wasn't the best, easily cleared by Parler. In goes Young. Jensen again. Keown's header away. Arsenal have... Uh, just got that ability when the opposition does put them under a bit of pressure to find their passes in the tightest of areas as they did then. Adu on to Campbell. Henri, lovely ball to Adu. Jeffers wants it early, he's gone for goal instead. He had a couple of options, didn't he? I'm sure you hardly need reminding, but Liverpool are playing Manchester United in a little game in Cardiff today. The Worthington Cup final, it kicks off at two. You can see it live on Sky Sports 1. And our next game on this channel, or rather, sorry, on Sky Sports 1 tomorrow night, is Aston Villa against Birmingham. Jeffrey's given Arsenal a free kick. have been very impressive on the road this season in fact they've won as many away games as Arsenal themselves a total of six three draws five defeats away from home and only Middlesbrough have conceded fewer goals on their travels in the Premiership this season Charlton have let in now just 17 what will certainly give them hope as well getting back into this game Alan is that they've scored in their last 15 matches
here. Good pull for Jeffers. He's just lost Mark Fish for the moment, but he's presented it straight to Parker. You. Young. Okay. The beat pass a bit heavy from Yule, but plenty of time for Jonathan Fortune. Only his second season as a regular first teamer, the young centre back with only 22. Here's Parker. And Bronco's able to see that one out quite uh, casually. I think uh, Alan Kirby should be reasonably happy with the side's performance in this first half. You know, they have been very competitive and they've tested Arsenal on a couple of occasions. But uh, clearly that uh, piece of magic by Thierry Henry setting the opportunity up for Francis Jeffers just to side foot home. And uh, he would have known coming into this game that the likes of Henry and Jeffers are capable of doing that to any side, never mind his. Fish gets plenty on the clearance. Back in by Campbell. And the boot is a little high, so Arsenal got the free kick. It's only Charlton's third successive season in the Premiership, remarkably enough. They finished ninth and then 14th in the last two seasons. Remember, they were relegated in their first season at this level. Bounced straight back again. against Henry, it's still in play, not now, Arsenal's throw. Edu, now Pires, Ray Parler for Arsenal, good effort from that range, and it almost caught out Kylie. I don't think he knew an awful lot about it, did he? Dean Kiley, it's a wonderful strike from Ray Paul, and not really renowned from this distance, but he really does catch it well. He certainly bounces in front of the Charlton keeper, which makes it doubly hard for him to take. I think he was grateful just to claim it. Hasn't scored since last season's FA Cup final, Ray Parler. Token of the FA Cup, another massive game, of course, for Arsenal next weekend when they play Chelsea in the quarter final. Oh, there was a shout there, I'm sure, from Bala, which deceived Powell. The gamesmanship. This is Henri. Lovely skill again from Thierry Henri, but he got the ball wrong. That's a great shame, but uh, it's the first time really we've seen Van Broncos getting forward from that left back position. I really thought that the two full backs today, were really natural midfield players, would have been perhaps a little bit more adventurous. But perhaps let's give us give credit to Charlton because they've worked very hard. Kishi Chef on the right hand side, Jensen on the left hand side, to try and prevent that from happening. When Arsenal beat Charlton of the Valley in September, they made history. It was the 44th consecutive game in the top division in which they'd scored, beating a record that had stood uh, for 66 years, held by Manchester City previously. They're used to breaking records at the Highbury. They do. Now Parler. Toure. Plenty lining up for the cross here. It's gone short to Edu and now Jungberg. Back to the Brazilian. And again. Jungberg bursting onto it. Well played. Well played, Scotty Parker. Might have hurt himself in the process, but he really has given another trademark tireless performance in that midfield area. Jungberg. Today. This is Keogh. Parler turning it back into his own half to Campbell. Arsenal have won 18 of their 28 league games so far. Six draws, four defeats, 60 points, five ahead of Manchester United and now Newcastle. Keogh for that. Thierry Henry. 
Oh, lovely little ball for Toure. I don't know what he was thinking of there. Oh, what a great change because it was a wonderful work opening by Arsenal. Again, some slick passing and just this ability and awareness of Henri to slot Toure in, and that really needs to come across the face of the goal. You can see there's enough players in there to convert that opportunity, and he's just acknowledging that. The young player still to make his mark on this uh, Arsenal side. Again, another player had limited opportunities. Fishy Chef on to Young. Just caught there by Van Bronckhorst. Surely on the Arsenal bench about that decision. <laughs> Pat Rice on his feet protesting. <laughs> Easily cleared by Parla. Yule trying to win it back. Pires with a brave header. Kishishev forward. It's gone straight to Kevin Lisby. Oh, good play by Edu. Oh, what skill as well. But Charlton keep pressing Arsenal in their own half. And that's worked out brilliantly for them. Lisby. They've got a corner out of that. Oh, they'll be unfortunate, really, Charlton, because uh, so Campbell guilty of overplaying, really, in an area where he just needed to get the ball away. Certainly won't want to give. Uh, Charlton a lifeline going into the interval here, giving them a chance or a potential chance to equalise. Fishy Chef got the attempted cross all wrong, that was a total waste. Oh, it was such a great shame, wasn't it? I, you know, you really can't afford to give away opportunities like that from set pieces. They've won their last two away games, Charlton against West Brom and Sunderland, just one defeat in the last seven on the road. But of course, this the supreme test, and they still have to go to Manchester United and to Liverpool. Henri with a towering header. Bartlett now for Charlton. This could be their final opportunity to draw a level. Parker. In this half anyway. <laughs> no quarter. Astor given there. Charlton's throw it. To the dismay of all in that corner of Hyder. Dermot Gallagher, the fourth official, just hiding out of the way of the wrath of the Arsenal bench at the moment. <laughs> Trying to escape down the uh, tunnel. <laughs> the throwing towards Fish, Bartlett's alongside him as well, they're going each other's way, if anything. You. Good play by Adil onto Pires, dangerous break here. Thierry Henry on the ball, they've got Jeffers on Mark, far post, screaming for it. What a mess they made at that! And Pires has headed it in! Charlton have shot themselves in the foot in stoppage time at the end of the first half. They had at least two good opportunities to get that one away, and now they've been punished. Robert Pires scores his 11th goal of the season. Well, classic Arsenal counter-attack play, really. Charlton had the opportunity, they had a throw in in the final third. And it'll be to the fury of their manager, Alan Kirbishley. He left his uh, seat in the box. And he certainly doesn't see what happens next because that really is poor, poor defending from Charl. Wonderful place from Henri. And Chrissy Powell gets it totally wrong, really. He ought to have cleared the danger. And Freddie Jumberg, well, he's just ahead of it there. And the ball comes off Chrissy Powell. And Freddie Jumberg just helps it into the danger area off the post and Robert Perez thinks thank you very much indeed Perez gets his 10th goal in the last 15 Premiership matches right on half time Danny Jeffers had scored midway through the first half Charlton have played well but quite simply Arsenal have played even better and that's why they go off leading at half time by two goals two goals well, if England can take four Australian wickets for less than 50 runs, Charlton can come back from 2-0 down at Highbury. Let's rejoin Brian and Alan.
Well, it's worth saying that no team in the Premiership has won more away games this season than Charlton. Their six wins on the road is already more than they managed in the whole of last season. And as you say, Marcus, they were a goal behind here last season before going on to win 4-2. But that was only one goal behind. And it was only the second time that Alan Kirby's side had beaten Arsenal in their last 17 meetings. It was their first win at Highbury for 46 years. I'm sure it won't be another... 46 years before they win again but if they can repeat that feat here from a 2-0 deficit it really would be the biggest upset of this season I would think the sun comes out for the start of the second half Arsenal have the target of going 8 points clear again of their nearest rivals Manchester United and Newcastle United at the top of the Premiership table lost only four times this season but then again Arsenal were beaten only three times in 38 games throughout the whole of last season they are remarkably I think the only London club who won the league championship in the last 42 years what on earth have the others been doing in that time and by the way this season Arsenal are unbeaten in every match against another London club trip on Parker by Van Bronckhorst Been good uh, full credit to Scott Parker as well once again just getting straight back up he really is emerging as a, a very very talented individual isn't he and he's had a very good day today Jensen's free kick dangerous Keel met it first it was important defending from Martin Keel it was a good ball into the danger area by Jensen Powell with the header away, Parler straight back in and then lashed forward by Jason Newell Keown wins the aerial battle against Bartlett this is Jensen against Toure and also Jungberg the uh, little clash of the Scandinavians goes in Arsenal's favour the top of the Premiership for 14 weeks Arsenal and they've taken no fewer than 25 out of the last 33 points available. They've never been lower than second in the table since the end of August. They conceded a free kick here, however. The giant Mark Fish, who's got a couple of goals this season, making his way forward. Jason Newell has sneaked away to the far post. Oh, well that wasn't uh, such a routine save as David Seaman maybe made it look. Oh, he's capable, isn't he, Klaus Jensen? I talked about that in the first half. The first one that he tried to execute was awful, but that one wasn't too far away. Back to fitness now, David Seaman, after the uh, groin injury that kept him out recently. Henri. Oh, that's a great ball for Jungberg, but just... Too much pace. Yeah, he was annoyed with himself, wasn't he? Thierry Henry just got a little bit too much on the ball to Freddie Jumberg, but Jumberg, you know, he really is emerging as a key figure in this game, and he's certainly drifting from that right-hand side, as we've seen him time and time again to good effect. Van Bronckhorst. Dutchman leaves it to the Brazilian. Adu. Now Parla. Here. Confidence oozing, as you might expect, from Arsenal. A 2 0 lead, and at the start of play, anyway, a five point lead in the Premiership. They haven't actually won successive league titles, Arsenal, for 70 years now. On each of the last occasions, eight occasions, they've won the Championship, they failed to retain it the following season. So a little bit of history in the making, possibly, for Arsene Wenger. They're going to take some stopping, aren't they, Alan? They really are a, a first-class side. You know, everywhere you look, they, they're very strong, they're very powerful, they've got a lot of pace. So you just wonder who, between either Newcastle and Manchester United, are capable, really, of taking the title away from them. A couple of casualties here. still on the ground as is Jonathan Fortu. It's a pure accident really you know both players going for the ball. Fortune 
and Thierry Henry took two out there Thierry Henry like you said earlier though you know it's, it's incredible when you look at uh, the times how Arsene Wenger does rotate his side that look invariably Thierry Henry doesn't really get that rest you know such a desire from him as an individual to play in every game to add to the tally 25 goals this season he never looks tired does he <laughs> not when he's scoring goals certainly and uh, by the way he's got a fabulous record against Charlton seven goals in his previous four appearances against them well, I think Freddie Youngberg will probably get an hour and perhaps we might see Jermaine Pennant been out on loan at Watford this season and done very well indeed and uh, England the 21 international very highly rated of course came here as a teenager from Notts County but uh, like a lot of young players here find it very difficult to break in what is a world class team Charlton get the free kick and quickly taken for Powell to uh, latch on to it's not going to play anyway Powell thinking he might get a free kick he was wrong Henri Pires Jeffers has pilled away into a great position again just let the ball travel ahead of him but he has uh, cleverly won a corner well, the angle was always going to be tight for him wasn't it once again a very swift break you know Ray Parler keeps the ball in could have quite easily gone for a goal kick and the next moment Arsenal are winning a corner that's the sort of pace and drive that they have in their side In. Difficult one for Kylie to keep his eyes on that for sure. Good safe hands. Huge kick as well in the path of Jensen. Well, he did enough to uh, force Martin Keown into a hurried clearance. Charlton throw. Full marks to Dean Kiley actually, Alan. You know, he takes the ball very well from the corner from Van Broncos, but really does ping. A left footer, all of uh, 60, 70 yards upfield. Good direction. Only one to pick out. Hasn't missed a game this season. The Republic of Ireland international keeper. Lisby's header. And good early distribution from David Seaman, England's number one. To Pires. On to Adu. Jeff is in a great position again. Come to Henri. Henri! Well. You never know what you expect next from him. <laughs> There's certainly an exp expectancy in your voice, I think, when the ball dropped to him. I think you fancied him to hit the target here, and I think most people did. Uh, I just wonder whether it's going to be one of those days in front of goal for Thierry Henry. Certainly being the main instigator in creating chances. Good ball from Parker this time. This be back to the Dane Jensen and to Luke Young. Kishi Shep to the right. Jensen takes over. Good movement here from Charlton. Can they get something on the end of it this time? Good passing as well. Excellent build up play. Young's cross and Campbell hammers it away. Oh, good play from Charlton Athletic once again, you know. It's Scott Parker, it's the hub of that. Even a little audacious nutmeg on Robert Perez along the way. For good measure. Charlton are travelling fans in that corner of Highbury. Ooh, good effort by Fish. And some of those fans thought it had gone in. <laughs> they were up there, they were cheering. They thought Fish had converted this. There's a good set piece towards the near post. Just runs out of angle, really. Mark Fish can't quite direct it towards goal. And so Charlton fans saw the net was bulging. They thought they'd scored. And the Arsenal fans continue to taunt them for their error. In that gentle way football <laughs> fans have. Henri with a great little header on there. Young intercept. Parker to Powell. again. Oh, the bounce 
perfectly. Jeffers nicked away from him by Jonathan Fortune. Pat Rice just retrieving the uh, the ball for Arsenal. It's great to see him back in the technical area. Here's Henri. Incidentally, his right Betty, who's a great Arsenal fan and hardly misses a game. Quite ill at the moment, in hospital in London. Maybe, hopefully watching this. I hope uh, she recovers very quickly. The Arsenal 2-0 scoreline won't do her recovery any harm. There's Jungberg. Just over the head of Henri. Young. Fowler. Just look a wee bit lightweight, don't they, up front, Charlton Athletic. It's been very difficult, of course, for Bartlett and Lisby to really have any impact against Sol Campbell and Martin Keown. Two very, very uncompromising and tough defenders. Keown. <laughs> he might be tough and uncompromising, maybe not so good at times with his passing. Jensen. Here's Kishishev. Good and tidy outside the Arsenal penalty box, and now in typical fashion they break in numbers. Jeffers. Whoops, mistake by Kishishev. Adu thought about hitting it and leaves it to the master instead. Another little trick from Thierry. And ball was a claim there by Jungberg as he angled that one into the Arsenal penalty area. And Bronkhorst has the ball back for the champions. Henri. Jeffers is there again ahead of him and he got it wrong this time, Thierry Henry. He needed to, uh, to go early but really Charlton have been undone for some very, very good movement really by Arsenal at the moment. Mark Fish gets it clear, Henry <laughs> tried to do uh, another of his wonderful repertoire of tricks. This one didn't come off. Lisby, Jensen. Lisby's done well here. Well, was he brought down? That was a reasonable shout, but it's not been given. Henri at the other end. <laughs> Taunts the opposition at times. <laughs> well, he just almost invites defenders in, doesn't need to make challenges on him. And as you said, he's got a wonderful repertoire of skills, tricks, abilities. You know, every position he seems to pop up and just do some wonderful pieces of skill you don't really get the ordinary do you with Thierry Henry I reckon he's Brazilian I don't think he's French at all <laughs> <laughs> and Broncos will take the free kick The first threat. Oh, Van Bronckhorst did well. He'll be strong there against Kishishev. Okay, Charlton are about to make a change, and I think it's up front. We talked uh, about the fact that Lisby and, and Bartlett have found it very difficult, and whether Alan Kirbishley goes with three up front or just goes like for like. by Fortune. Now Powell. Lisby was nudged over then by Keogh. And maybe the, uh, Charlton will use the set piece to make their change. Yes, they're going to. And it is going to be, as you say, a like-for-like -like swap. They're going to take off the South African international Sean Bartlett and replace him with Jonathan Johansson. Not had the best of days, Bartlett. But then there's many strikers who can say that up against the likes of Keogh and Campbell. And by the way, Johansson scored a hat-trick for Charlton Reserves in the week against Arsenal Reserves. Jensen's free kick. Ewell. Away by Campbell. This is 
Young. Straight against Perez. He might be made to pay for that. Henri keeps it in play. Brilliant run by Henri. Perez! Oh, should have been three. Oh, wonderful pace, wasn't it, from Thierry Henri. And once again, you know, it's a fabulous counter-attack. That ball has been launched forward by Saul Campbell, then the close down by Robert Perez. But just look at this. Really is turbocharged, and you can't get anywhere near him. And then he has the ability to open it up for Perez to try and score. And Perez just really can't get his body around it to place it past Dean Kiley. Jeffers did well. They do to Van Bronckhorst. They do kept running. Met that tackle, didn't he? I hope he did. I think he knew exactly what Eddie was trying. Arsenal 17 games unbeaten in all competitions coming into this one today. Ten wins, seven draws. FA Cup quarter-final next weekend. Roma in the Champions League after that. Pires. Henri. Fischer beaten to it by Van Bronckhorst. Ah, oh, another trick from Henri. <laughs> Campbell. Shoot, say, say the crowd. <laughs> well, he did. <laughs> I think he's got a mate behind the goal who wanted the uh, match ball as a souvenir. I'm not sure if he's made that far back though. I think that was Rose Ed. <laughs> They've all enjoyed it, haven't they? We'll see, yes, yeah, Sol Campbell scored too many goals from 20 yards. He's pretending to see the funny side of it. I've got to be faintly embarrassed at least, hasn't he? <laughs> got three goals this season, but I think they've probably all been headers from a little bit nearer in than that. Now he could score from here. He could score from White Hart Lane. <laughs> Pires. Toure. And he's kept going, Toure. And still. He wasn't going to give up on that one either. So I said, really, after about 35 minutes, Arsenal will be getting to get into the groove. And they've certainly carried that on in this second period. Really, Charlton uh, are beginning to look a little bit demoralised, not quite certain what to do next, such as Arsenal's performance in the second half. And Arsenal bidding to make it a dozen Premiership matches without defeat today. Strange corner. Someone didn't write, read the script, did they? I think someone was perhaps due to spin away towards the far post well if Charlton think they're going to get it easy because uh, Arsenal are about to take off one of their star players they're about to bring on one of their star players as well Sylvain Wiltor the man who's going of course famously clinched the championship at Old Trafford last season I was wondering whether it's going to be Freddie Jungberg you know I'm sure that Arsenal uh, knowing that the Swedish midfield player's been out for the last 14 games and I think he's only had one reserve team game under his belt before today's game. And the hour mark has passed now. Yeah, he hasn't played since December. It would be sensible now to give him a break. Jeff is trying to claim a penalty there. Now, Jensen or Charlton. If they could get one goal, it could make it a very different picture. There goes Perez. Fanny Jeffers, good tackle by Fish, still Jeffers, Fish gets it away again, corner. That oh, was a good challenge by Mark Fish. And Fanny Jeffers was bearing down on goal. Fantastic ability to lose his marker, Jeffers to take up great positions on the field. And it is, as we expected, Freddie Jungberg who makes way to a standing ovation from Heidrich. Huge favourite. The man who contributed 17 goals to Arsenal's wonderful double season. Along comes Will Toward, who so far contributed 10 goals this season.
shot to Pires. Henri looking for the far post this time. And Kylie took command. What a great ball that was by Kylie. Henri couldn't have bettered that. Jonathan Johansson. Now Kishishev. Awkward sort of clearance by Carlo Ture. He's in more trouble. Fish. And loses the battle to keep it in play. Wasn't that, that pass from uh, the keeper though a moment ago? Well, it's the second time he's done it. You know, I mentioned it earlier. He did one uh, to Klaus Jensen, I think, about uh, ten minutes ago. Oh. He knew what he was doing. Of course, a little <laughs> deflection off Jeffers would take it perfectly into the path. Of fortune, fortune being a very operative word then. Going through a slightly surreal stage this game. Kishishev. Johansson. This is Lisby. Johansson continued his run. Jason Ewell well placed in the middle. Campbell had to reach that all right. A little period now for uh, Charlton. They've got the bit between the teeth again, believing that they can still rescue something from this game. And why not? Luke Young. Kishishev. This is Jensen. Campbell with the clearance. And this is where Arsenal are so strong, breaking in this manner. Especially with this fella. Henri, still going. Thank you very much. That's two. Here's a third. But Fish wasn't going to fall for it this time. Really, that's a brilliant turn of pace, isn't it? Yeah, at times, you know, Arsenal almost sucks sides in to, to track attacking against them. And they break so quickly. It's very difficult to be able to defend against that. He's be doing well there. Johansson retrieves possession. Young. Kishishev wanted to play it early and finds Jensen. He scored from that sort of range a year ago. Not this time. Well, they just need to nick a goal from somewhere, don't they, Charlton? As well as they've uh, played at times here this afternoon. You know, some good control, certainly from this young man, Scott Parker. Lisby's offside. And he gets to the final third, really, which has been the big disappointment. Haven't really had enough in the armory just to open up Arsenal. There's only a World Cup winner coming <laughs> off the bench now. <laughs> I'm sure when they talk about the Arsenal dressing room, put your medals on the table. <laughs> I'm not sure they've got a big enough table in the dressing room to cope with it. I think it broke about eight months ago, didn't it? Under the sheer weight. <laughs> Poor kick there by David Seaman. It's gone straight to Kishishev, onto Johansson. Kishishev again, clever ball, but offside, Lisby again. That must have been close, to have been very, very close. Clever ball, wasn't it, from Kishishev. And Kevin Lisby, just his pace getting in behind. Yeah. Oh, that's the inexperience of youth, really. Perez, who uh, I think picked up a little knock a while ago, will come off. From his bit, the... Uh, Headed goal just before half time, increasing Arsenal's lead to two. And on in his place, Gilberto has played almost every game, and this is uh, first season, of course, in English football after his long summer in the World Cup finals with Brazil. It's interesting, really. I think that Darson Wenger hasn't really taken any liberties with this football match. So, being the respect that he has for Charlton Athletic, I think at this stage it would have been very easy to allow fringe players, inexperienced players like Pennant and, and Sigan to a degree to come into this game but no he elects to go with the likes of Gilberto and Viltor Jeffers Parler now Gilberto on to Van Bronckhorst good little ball in Henri takes over good effort Scuffs it really a little bit, just like Thierry Henry, but once again just bossing the situation against Fish. And that first touch and that pace takes him into a good area. 
And it's an in-between ball, isn't it? You know, is it a shot? Is it a ball towards the far post, towards Francis Jeffers? Ends up somewhere between. 12 uh, goal attempts by Arsenal. They have been the dominant side. They have certainly been the better side as this game has wore on. Charlton have got to keep believing. 20 minutes to go. It's plenty of time to get back into the game. But it is against mere mortals. Against Arsenal, I'm not so sure. <laughs> Jeff is strong. Did well as the manager would have liked that. And he's battling away again. And in comes Van Bronckhorst to pick out Henri. Wiltor to his right. Haller arriving. This is Sylvain Wiltor. Gilberto is well placed in the middle. Jensen. And now Kishishek. Caught out by Edu. And wins the free kick. Fouled by the Brazilian. There's one thing Alan Kirvishly hasn't done is uh, sacrificed the shape of his of his team. He could have quite easily have gone into a more 4-3-3 ambitious formation to try and get something out of this game I just wonder whether is this uh, game now is going beyond Charlton whether he may well elect to do that because some really haven't troubled David Seaman have they in this second half and deep discussion with Mervyn Day whilst they decide how they can get a foothold in this game Kishishev Johansson first time ball for Lisby to chase Jason Ewell arriving far post wanted it early Lisby delaying the cross and then giving it away well, I needed to go in a lot earlier didn't it from the youngster Kevin Lisby uh, did have a good opportunity Charlton because they outnumbered Arsenal Young Jeffers uh, making it difficult for Kishishev Along goes Luke Young, and now he's given it away. And Jonathan Fortune with an even worse mistake. That could be costly. Henri spotted Edu to his left. Well, a little bit too powerful, <laughs> but uh, with the aid of the corner flag, which he beat en route, he's kept it in. <laughs> Just have to take it over his shorts first, though. Here's Henri. Oh. And he's gone for the return ball here, Henri. And I'm diving on him if I was Jason Ewell at this moment. Toure. Still Toure. Big claim from the fans there that that had gone out, but uh, the linesman saw nothing. Parler. Roberto, clever, Jeffers, away by Kishishev. Well, they really are getting outplayed at the moment, aren't they? Arsenal are just showing everybody what a good side they are. They did struggle a little bit in the uh, first half. To be fair, Charlton worked extremely hard against him. Well, it takes a little bit more than hard work at the moment. And uh, Will Torres won another corner. Don't tell me he's feeling tired. <laughs> <laughs> so he is human after all. Big booming cross for Sol Campbell, who did well to keep that in play. No, he didn't actually. The linesman is uh, eagle-eyed enough to decide that had gone over the line. Just looking at Thierry on rear. I just wonder whether he's just uh, feeling the effects now. He's put a lot into this match. But uh, George would be happy. He was complaining earlier that he thought his socks were too high up his legs. Well, there you go, George. One for Thierry for you. Over the head of Johansson. Clearance. Henri. This is Scott Parker. 
for the ball for Johansson. Johan Lisby in the middle. Oh! That was close. Good defending. Good defending from Toure. Spotted the run of Kevin Lisby. He couldn't really afford to allow Lisby a free run here. Just have a look at Toure. Lisby thinks he's got across him. And Toure, not a natural defender, does very well indeed against the Charlton youngster. A glimmer of hope there for Charlton. And 15 minutes to go, it'd be interesting if they scored now. Ian strongly. And here come Arsenal on the break again. Hey, do. Good ball for Parla. This is Jeffers. Still Franny Jeffers. Still, and Wiltor shot. <laughs> Gilberto. Wiltor. They come at you from all angles. Well, there's so much quality in this side, haven't they? And uh, well, almost persistence really on the part of Francis Jeffers, just trying to really force his way through. Wiltor gets off a good chance. And it's well saved by Dean Kiley. They really are being run ragged at the moment, Charlton. Like a demoralised side. We'll come into this uh, game, of course, six in the table. Done extremely well. A lot of uh, power and pace and passion saw them through the first 45 minutes. Came up very strongly and very good goalkeeping by Kylie. Not for the first time today. <laughs> Pinged another one there. I'll tell you what, they should have him up front. I think here's Jensen. Oh, good pullback for Lisby, who should have made more of that. Oh, look at the frustration here. on the bench, really, for Charles Allen Kirby's doing Mervyn Day. It's a brilliant strike from Dean Carley to get the ball in the final third. And there goes Henri. And now Adu. Good save. Jeffers is there. Oh. Miraculously kept away by Luke Young from a third Arsenal goal. He can't believe it. Well, he's getting a pat off everybody and right me so once again fabulous play from Arsenal and Francis Jeff as well you don't often see him miss chances like that but I don't think it's a miss chance really it's just fantastic defending from Luke Young well, I think the three best passes of the day have all come from Dean Kiley the Charlton goalkeeper <laughs> there's Parla they do with a header I'd love to see him in the five sides in training. I bet he's uh, an absolute sensation. Well, his distribution is uh, fantastic. And you know this is part and parcel now of being a goalkeeper, whether it's uh, direct from your hands or when you receive a back pass, but it really does get Charlton into a wonderful position. But once again, just missing that vital cutting edge. Injury problem for Charlton. Yeah, the referee there signalling know for a stretcher or whatever but it's a shame for Chris Powell well this has probably never happened before I'm fairly certain it hasn't in Charlton's history if Powell has to go off here they can replace one England left back with another because Paul Lynch <laughs> Goes Powell to generous applause and on comes Wolkinczewski, Charlton's youngest ever player, famously. Made his debut when he was just 16 and still only 21. Jensen to Parker. Here's Young. Jensen. Um, was always going to win that ball turned away by Gilberto straight to the latest arrival Kuncheski Powell off with a knee injury incidentally and uh, got themselves a free kick there it would be a little bit unfortunate I think Paul Kuncheski uh, I think in a lot of instances he probably would have found himself a, a regular first team player by now but of course the consistency of Chris Powell in that left back position it really has uh, limited his opportunities and he's uh, only just finished serving a suspension for his sending off against Chelsea. 
fortunes there. The head in the end, the head air in the end came from uh, Johansson and half an Arsenal defender for a corner. That's a good chance here, though, Alex. Well, it really was uh, right on the spot in Johansson and Fish and Fortune. They were all trying to get the ball. Well, the thing made a dramatic impact as a late substitute against Aston Villa in the last game. Two goals in three minutes, although the second is being looked at by the dubious goals committee. Just when you think you've got Arsenal penned in like this is when they're often at their most dangerous, though. However, Chart have got another corner. The clock ticks into the final ten minutes. <laughs> Fish with a header. Campbell was uh, the meaty presence that made him uh, powder off target. That again, though. Young. Away by Martin Keo to Henri. Wonderful little touch to Wilton. And again, Sylvain Wilton. Here's a do. Henri. Just wouldn't sit down there for Parler. He's waiting for the bounce. Campbell. Okay. They do. And now Van Bronckhorst. Henri takes over again for Arsenal. The collector's item. Giving the ball away. Not happened that often, has it, during the course of this afternoon? Really has been outstanding, hasn't it? And uh, Arsene Wenger, of course, who brought him here, and uh, Thierry Henry having an unhappy spell in Italy. And Wenger must be absolutely delighted, not only with Thierry Henry, but uh, his other signings, and the way that this team and squad are shaping up, not just a challenge for honours this season, but certainly for seasons to come. Well talk, back to Parla. Well played Luke Young, who was determined that that ball was going to be his. <laughs> Still going. Yeah, great show because it just walked past two Brazilians. First it was Adu, then it was Gilberto. Certainly want to tell the grandchildren, isn't it? It's getting increasingly unlikely that he'll be able to tell the grandchildren about the day he finished on the losing uh, winning side, I should say, at Highbury, because uh, time is running out now for Charlton to repeat the miracle they achieved here last season when they beat Arsenal 4-2. today <laughs> slightly unusual isn't it because he could quite easily have given the uh, card to the child athletic midfield play you can see there tackle from behind and always a bit of concern of course so uh, and there's a knee problem for Van Bronckhorst having had so long out with a cruciate ligament injury appearance of the season the Dutchman and as I mentioned in the first half he could have a long run in that position with Ashley Cole injured <laughs> well, 
with an air of inevitability about proceedings now as we move towards the final five minutes. Arsenal's uh, five-point lead in the Premiership is about to become eight again, you would think. Broncos giving it away, however, and Jensen can't do anything with the gift. Not happy at the moment, is he, Van Broncos? As you rightly said, it, the tackle from Scott Parker really has shaken up. I think it was that right knee that he was feeling. Clearance is Adu. Todd wins it back. Clever ball from Sylvain Wilto. And goes to Ray. Gilberto takes over. Now Van Bronckhorst into the final, well, almost four minutes now, plus stoppage time. There won't be a great deal of that. Wilto. Gilberto. Anybody counting the passes in this attack? Henri. He almost fell over and still kept the ball. He's certainly been disappointed. Uh, got to get on the score sheet here this afternoon. Well, he's got everything else, hasn't he? Arsenal get a free kick. If you go back to the end of last season, Arsenal have won 21 out of their last 26 Premiership matches at Highbury. Just one defeat here in the last 14 months. And with their magnificent away form, that is why they're champions. That is why they're championship favourites. Henri will talk that again and he's won a corner. That must be fantastic, really. You know, he can bring Sylvain Viltor onto the game and Gilberto. And, you know, there's no Dennis Bergkamp today, of course, he's out injured. No Patrick Vieira, he's suspended. This squad really is awesome. change before the corner is taken here Charlton yes they do Scotty Parker has had an excellent game being taken off maybe uh, something to do with those clashes he's had recently and the Swede Matthias Svensson on in his place his first job will be to help defend the corner and he's marking Jeffers Clever from Parler, very clever. A good ball in too. He's earned another corner off Mark Fish. Parler, oh, lovely ball again. Good talk. Sets one up for Van Bronckhorst. Let's come off Fish for corner number three. Really quite get hold of it, did he? Van Bronckhorst. But, uh, I think Arsenal are quite happy just to let the clock tick down. Of course, I think Charlton likewise now. They know there's nothing in this for them now. I said corner three. That's in quick succession, of course. A dozen altogether over the game. Well, the first major domestic trophy of the afternoon of the season is about to be decided this afternoon as Jeffers miss hits his shot to Wiltor the major domestic trophy of the season is still very much in Arsenal's grasp you feel well the referee's assistant is uh, certainly flagged for the offside and it is as this ball comes back to Sylvain Wiltor but it's an excellent save Dean Carley didn't know had to make the save Team in Arsenal's position at this stage of a Premiership season 
has failed to win the title since Manchester United were overtaken by Arsenal themselves in 97-98. Gilberto, Wilto, as we move into the two minutes of stoppage time, Arsenal are completely in control. Good on Rivo, Alan, I talked about it earlier, you know, he's not played as a midfield player then. You know, you'd central midfield players, would you like to pick the ball up and pass it the way he does? As well, Tom. Arsenal produce a finishing touch here, or is there to be some consolation in the game for Charlton? Jensen for them. Uh, really has uh, been the, uh, the part of their game today, Charlton, that really has let them down. You know, I think up to then they've you know, battled very well, they worked extremely hard in the first 45 minutes, found it particularly difficult in this second period. They've got a good shape to their team, but when it comes to that final third, when you need that little bit extra, especially against the likes of Arsenal, just hasn't been there for them. Into the final minute at Highbury. Arsenal on their way to yet another Premiership victory. Jeffers, who set them on the way with that goal in the first half. Konchesky sliding tackle. Strong run, so late in the game by Lisby. On to Kishishev. Campbell's clearance. Young, Johansson. Kishishev's giving it away to Kiev. It's 12 league games without defeat for Arsenal. It's 13 wins out of 15 on their own patch. It's eight points clear of Manchester United and Newcastle United at the top of the table. It's clear that if anyone is to stop Arsenal retaining their title this season, they're going to have to produce a superhuman effort in the last nine or ten games. Charlton came here last season and shocked everyone with their 4-2 victory. It was not to be a repeat performance today. Franny Jeffers scoring his almost customary goal. And then sloppy defending really by Charlton right on the half-time break. Led to Pires doubling Arsenal's lead. Alan Kerbishley's team haven't played badly today, not by any means. But the opposition they've been up against are of the highest calibre of all. And the final scoreline here at a sunlit Highbury is Arsenal 2. Charlton Athletic nil. A little bit predictable in the end shot. A little bit predictable in the end shot. Thierry, many changes to the Arsenal lineup today, but it was the same smooth old performance out there today. Yeah, I think it's not the first time we showed uh, as well when we played uh, against Manu and the FA Cup. Uh, people were saying that, you know, maybe it's, it's going to be a mistake that to rest this player against uh, a lot of players or against, against Manu, but uh, we showed that we can, we can deal with it. And today is the same, we were at home, you know, whatever, you know, whoever the boss has to put on the pitch, you know, we, we just want to do well and, and win the game. And it was not that easy, you know, after, after playing a Champions League game, it's never easy to, 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 to bounce back after the, in, in, uh, in, the, in the championship. And, uh, Today we did it and I think we did well. Two goals in the first half seem to kill the game off somewhat and you'll be pleased that Franny Jeffers was on the score sheet, I'm sure. Yeah, that's what we're expecting from him, you know. Uh, uh, he's always around the box and uh, I think he, he, he could have scored another one but I think he, he didn't fancy it. Arsenal could have scored a few more in the second half as well. Yeah, but I think that's not... You know, that's not the most, most important thing to, to score, um, four or five or, or whatsoever. The most important thing today was to get the free point and we all know that uh, Charlton was, was doing well at the moment and they always do well, they always play well at Ibury and uh, we wanted to, to just uh, extend our league today. We all know that Manu is missing one game because they're playing now, so uh, we just wanted to, to do the job today. We saw plenty of tricks from you today. Have you got any left that we haven't seen? 
I don't know, you know, I just uh, I just do things like that. I, I, I don't think about it before the game, I just I, ju I just do it. But that's not the most important thing today, you know. I, I, I know that, you know, when I play with Franny, I know that Franny likes to stay obviously in the box and I know I have uh, a big part to do around and uh, and dropping stuff, you know. So today that's what I was trying to do, to, to put my teammates uh, in front of the net. And finally, it's eight points clear now. That's some gap, isn't it, at the top? Yeah, but... You know, I hope that's going to stay like that till the end. You know, we can we can keep on talking, you know, right now. But that's not the most important thing. The most important thing is to be there, to be there at the end. And uh, and and I'm sure that the other team behind is going to try to 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 catch us back. And at the end of the day, you know, we we uh, we are we are carry on the way we, we we just wanted to do. That means to to try to to extend our league as much as possible. Congratulations today, Thierry. You are the